ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्टु अभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम हरे कृष्ण टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टेन Chapter twenty-seven, entitled "Indra and Surubhi Offer Prayers," text number eight. Satvam mamai swaryam mamai swarya mada plutasya. कृतागस ते विदुषा प्रभाव क्षंत प्रभो अथारसी अतारहसी मूढ़ा चेतसो मैव पुनर्भुन मतिर्ईशा मे सती सत्व मम सत्व ममशर्व्यदलुप्त सत्व ममश्वर्य मद प्लुत कृतागसस्ते विदुषा प्रभाव कृतागसस्ते विदुषा प्रभाव क्षंत प्रभोतारहसी मूढ़चेतसो क्षंत प्रबोथारहसी मूढ़चेतसो मैव पुनर्भूनमतिश मे सती मैव पुनर्भूनमतिश मे सती सत्व ममशर्व मदलुप्लुत सत्व ममश्वर्य मदप्लुत कृतागसस्ते विदुषा प्रभाव क्षंत प्रबोथारहसी मूढ़चेतसो मैव पुनर्भूनमतिश मे सती
माता जी सत्व ममश्वर्य मदलुकृत कृतागसस्ते विदुषा प्रभाव क्षंतु प्रबोधारहसी मूढ़चेतसो मैवं पुनर्भूनमतिश मे सती सह ही तम योर सेल्फ मम ऑफ मी ऐश्वर्य ऑफ रूलरशिप मद इन द इंटॉक्सिकेशन प्लुत हु इज सबमर्ज कृत हैविंग कमिटेड आगस सिंथफुल ऑफेन्स ते योर अविदुष नॉट नोइंग प्रभाव द ट्रांसेंडेंटल इन्फ्लुएंस क्षंतुम टू फर्गिव प्रभो ओ मास्टर अथ देर फोर अर्हसी यू शुड मूढ़ फुलिश चेतस हूज इंटेलिजेंस मा नेवर एवं दस पुनः अगेन भूत मे इट बी मति ही कॉन्शियसनेस ईशा ओ लॉर्ड मे माय असती इम्प्योर ट्रांसलेशन एनग्रॉस्ड इन प्राइड ओवर माय रूलिंग पावर इग्नोरेंट ऑफ योर मैजेस्टी आई ऑफेंडेड यू Oh Lord, may you forgive me. My intelligence was bewildered, but let my consciousness never again be so impure. Purport. Although Lord Krishna protected the residence of Braja <coughs> by lifting Govardhan Hill, he had not yet punished Indra himself, and Indra feared that at any moment Sri Krishna might might call. the son of vivaswan yamraj who punishes impudent persons who defy the laws of god indra was quite fearful and then thus begged the lord's forgiveness on the plea that he could be purified only by krishna's mercy and that he was too stubborn to learn a good lesson through mere punishment in fact despite indra's humility in that ca- in this case his heart was not completely purified later on in this canto we will find that when lord krishna once took a parijata flower from indra's kingdom poor indra again reacted violently against the supreme personality of godhead shri krishna thus we should aspire to go back to our eternal home in the kingdom of krishna and should not become entangled in the imperfect life of material gods hare krishna om agyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam stapitam yena bhutale स्वयं रूप कदाम ददाति स्वदाक जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो द सीन इन भागवतम इज नाउ दट कृष्ण हैज केप द माउंटेन डाउन इंद्रा हैज कम टू हिज सेंसेस एपरेंटली एंड ही हैज इज नाउ अंडरस्टूड वॉट अ ब्लंडर ही हैज डन ही वेंट टू हिज गुरुदेव बृहस्पति and he said yes you have number one fool you have done a big blunder and then he went to brahma and brahma also said the same thing 
the Brahma gave a solution that please go to Surubhi, mother cow, and plead to her to beg your case to Krishna. And then Surubhi, out of her great kindness, she has no pride. She doesn't feel, oh, look at this. Now Indra has come to me. Look at my position. This Devendra has come down to my feet to plead and beg to plead his case to Krishna. She has nothing like this complex in mind. And immediately she takes him to Krishna. It is said that when Krishna was lifting Govardhan, at one point of time when Samvartaka clouds exhausted all their energy, actually Indra came to his senses, he understood. The clouds which cause pralaya are emptied out and nothing has happened. Even one leaf from the tree from Govardhan has not been plucked off. So I understood. This is Sri Krishna, my Lord. Just cannot be anybody else who has defeated my highest power with the weakest part of his body. <laughs> so he actually came to senses and he came down on Airavata. And he came on one side. And Krishna knows everything. Krishna looked on the other side. He didn't want to even look at him. Then he came on the other side. And Krishna looked on the other side. Opposite side. Just showing him that I don't care for you. You are Mr. Nothing for me. So then Indra understood that there is no scope. He tried to at- attract attention of Krishna. Looking for mercy. Looking for forgiveness. But Krishna didn't even look at him. Because he was trying on his own. He had not taken shelter of a devotee. So he goes up to Guru. Then Brahmaji, Brahmaji tells him to take surrender of uh, Surubhi. And when Surubhi brings him, Surubhi in front, Indra behind her. Not Indra in front and Surubhi by side of him. Surubhi in front, Indra behind. And that is the first time when Krishna was somehow taking a survey of so-called damages that could have taken place due to Indra's reigns. He was just going around and watching. At that time, she approached him. And there is a first time, because Surubi approached him for Indra, Indra, Krishna looked at him. First glance. And then all these prayers are beginning. So, it is not that simply when we offer prayers, Krishna has to listen to our prayers. It's not like that. The prayers have to be performed in proper consciousness and through proper channel. And the proper channel is always a devotee of the Lord. Through a devotee of the Lord, taking his shelter when we offer prayers, then Krishna will look at us, may look at us, will choose to look at us. And thus our good fortune will begin when he will look at us. And will he will listen to our prayers, he will receive our prayers. He's always eager to receive our prayers, no doubt about it. But everything has to be tuned in a proper mode, then only it can be received, right? I want to hear now uh, Ceylon station, railway, uh, radio station. I have to tune to it. I just cannot desire and it will be heard. I have to tune, then fine tune, then the vibrations will receive, be received by me, heard by me. So first point is to understand that we have to have a proper mood to offer prayers. And it has to be channelized through a proper um, personality of a devotee of the Lord. And then at Surubhikund is a beautiful place we visited this time in the Yatra. That is where Indra offered his prayers. There is a place in front of that when, uh, where Indra actually realized his mistake, came down there. And at this place, because he was offering prayers in mood of repentance, of feeling sorry. He was heard and he was forgiven. He was also mildly reprimanded by Krishna. So if we have a genuine repentance in the heart, then only true forgiveness comes. We cannot have lip service sorry. We cannot have just lip service saying sorry and then everything is alright. The real pardon comes, forgiveness comes to us only when we are truly repentful. Because Jesus Christ also explained in Bible that when we put a nail in a wall and then we realize, oh, it's a mistake and we remove the nail and we think story is over. No, story is not over. There is a hole in the wall. 
which needs to be plugged. And even if you plug the hole, there's a scar there, there's a mark there. There's always be a, be a deficiency. So when we do of, make an offense, we have to understand by saying sorry, nothing ends there. There is pain, and there is healing, and there is a scar. It always will remind you of the offense. So one has to be, for this reason, one has to be genuinely repentful when we beg pardon. Then true forgiveness will come. So Surubi Kundi is that place where we actually beg forgiveness with true and genuine repent, repentance in the heart. Now looking at the situation of Indra, no doubt Indra is a great dear devotee of Lord Krishna. Otherwise Krishna wouldn't have even listened to his prayers. Otherwise Krishna wouldn't have to do all these things to you know, think about him, plan for the Leela, preach his father, all this big deal that he has been put, he is putting up is because he loves Indra. Indra is his devotee. But in purport it is mentioned that Indra was not still completely purified. That's why he kept on making mistakes. What is the situation? Why is this that Indra is a great devotee of the Lord? Still, he goes to in this goes in this predicament of pride and you know atrocious nature, destructive nature, just because pride is hurt a little bit by somebody. Because we have to study the life in heavenly planets. So many people in the world here are struggling to reach heavens, performing so many karma kandas, so many punya karyas. So many helps to help so-called helpless people who need help. So many things are done so that people think that we want to assure our place in heavens. Swarg lok jana hai. But what is there in Swarg lok? We have to analyze right now while we are living in this world. We should know what is there. The thing is that there are so much of opulences there and so much of opportunities to enjoy strength gratification is there that it is very difficult for even a sincere soul to focus on Krishna. Even now also, when difficulties are there, we are so much prayerful, Oh Krishna, please save me, please, please, please. But when some happiness comes, we immediately get engrossed in that. Hmm? Immediately. And we don't even realize that we have forgotten Krishna for that moment. And more happiness comes, and more money comes, and position comes, and promotion comes, and more opportunity of enjoyment comes. Immediately we get engrossed. Now what is the meaning of that engrossment in the enjoyment? Forgetfulness of Krishna. Very simple. If if so called tathakathit, happiness which comes to us in this world, engulfs us so much. What to speak of? Indra Lok. Indra Lok, they just said that flowers only grow there. They never become morose. What do you call it in English? They become don't never become stale. They only remain only grow and remain like that only. So there are abundance of flowers. Whenever something happens, they are ready to push for rishti immediately. And fragrance, the beauty, you cannot even imagine, the Nandan one that Indra has. Then Apsaras, it is said that the best of best of ladies on this earth is like horse in front of the lowest of Apsaras in Indra Loka. And then there are, there is Menaka, Urvashi and Rambha and thus there are special Apsaras. And everybody in heavenly planets has fragrance in the body. We have bad smell in the body, from many portions of body. But in Svargaloka, the Bhoga Sharira is so beautifully designed by Krishna, it only smells one krosha radius around you. And each one has a unique and specific smell. And when you go in assembly like this, like Sunday feast program, there is only mixture of beautiful fragrances. Huh? And uh, one time uh, Radhana Swami Maharaj was giving lecture in Mirror Temple and he was describing that how the celestial women was were traveling for a function together in aeroplanes. And when they were sitting together, their bodies were so beautiful, fragrant. So he said, if any one of us at this stage of our earthly existence is transferred in same condition there, we will just die out of overwhelming lust. Will just die. The lust will be so overwhelming that will just die. You just cannot tolerate. So much of beauty is there. Plus, there is no, nothing like almost no disease and no old age. Simply youth and beauty 
Like we can go on describing each part of the body, how it must be beautiful and attractive and non-staling and fresh. And then they dance also along with that. They just don't exist there. They dance, they sing and they play instruments and they superfluous vidyadharas, jaranas and kimpurushas and yakshas and gandharvas. You just cannot think about them. How, you know, even earthly some singers sing and we are like mesmerized. So many singers mesmerize us even today. What to speak of Gandharvas? Gandharvas are born, born artists, born singers and born instrument players and born dancers and born artists. They don't have to do all this mehnat in their life. From birth they are like this. And such excellent people exist there, full of art on a subtle platform, you know, and you go higher and higher, then there are subtler and subtler platforms of existence in Lokas. So much of enjoyment is there. For example, Indra was observing dance of Apsaras one day. He was so engrossed. And Durvasa Muni comes from Vaikuntha. Imagine. With the garland of Vishnu. And he offers him with great love to Indra. And Indra is so engrossed, he doesn't even notice that who has come. Out of mercy of Krishna, such great souls are coming to give you mercy. But the engrossment is such that even though you don't want to disrespect them, but still you disrespect them unintentionally. So he took the garland, didn't even notice the importance of that and gave it to the elephant. An elephant is an elephant. So he just crushed it under his feet. So, for some engrossment of enjoyment, for some time, what happened? He got a curse. That you lose all your opulence. And immediately Indra became bereft of all the opulence. Not only him, all his people, demigods also lost. And Bali respected his guru Pleased him, got blessings and immediately came up and usurped everything. He said that Bali Maharaj looking was so opulent that his, his stage, they couldn't even bear. They ran away. It was so nice stage. And I can go on telling so many uh, occasions. And they are so engrossed, you know. The great personalities were there. They had some deviation because they were looking at some women. They had to come down. Somebody did something. They had to come down. Because the enjoyment in Swargaloka is so engrossing, so engulfing and so subtle that his arrow is quite deep in the heart. And that's why Indra is again and again falling into his predicament. The, I'm, I just explained the situation which is physical. Then comes the power that they have. Every demigod, not only Indra. Indra is the topmost of demigod, the king of the demigods. But every demigod has such powers, such position, such influence, you know. What is happening in your intestine right now is controlled by Vayudev. By one of the Vayus that's going on in your body. Such control they have got. Mahadev went to a demigod of insects to tell him, remove the insects from here. Such control they have got. And what disease to give you through which insect, everything is so subtly and meticulously controlled by them. Imagine, we have some position in some institution and we have some powers and authority. We are so proud and puffed up. What to speak of the power and authority of Indra? He has Samvartaka clouds which can destroy, which can can create 100 kilometers of water all over the earth. It becomes a ball of water with earth in between 100 kilometers radius of water everywhere. Such powers you have got. But what is his predicament? He offends the supreme personality of Godhead because of this situation. So it is good luck or bad luck? It's extremely bad luck. Extreme bad luck. That you can't even recognize your worshipable Lord in the mud or intoxication of the position and the power and the authority and the source of enjoyment that you have. You even forget the very essence of our existence, the Supreme Lord. And he's failed to understand. And not only he failed to understand, he considered himself as an enemy, a person to be destroyed, a person to be punished. A person who is simply talkative, useless boy. He didn't say just forget him, but he thought about him in such a negative manner. You know? All because of the situation in Swargaloka, which he is attached to. So it is said that, why it is said that the in 4 lakh species of human life, human beings on earth are the highest. That means, yours and my life we have, which we have now, is higher than the topmost of demigod also. As per the scriptures, demigods are not topmost living entities. 
human being on earth is the utmost living entity. What is the basis of this understanding? Is the opportunity that the human being has on earth to understand Krishna. And although the demigods are so knowledgeable, they are well versed with scriptures, they are devotees, Krishna loves them, still the predicament is such that they are always fallible. And why earth is more, the life on earth as a human being is more superior? Because here there is enough pain to keep you awake <laughs> to the reality, you know. So, so, Papa and Punya, they are causing you to come birth, to take birth again and again. Some people say Punya is very good, we should acquire Punya, everybody is trying to acquire Punya. But the reality is, Punya is bad than Pap also. Because when Pap you do, and you have Papa Fala, that is reaction of Pap, it wakes you up to the reality. It gives you pain. And that pain makes you call out to the Lord or some higher authority for some mercy. So it keeps you in one good shape when you are suffering from Papa Fala. But what happens when you are enjoying Punya Fala? The immediate situation is forgetfulness of the Lord. That's why Punya is very bad. Pap actually you are scared of doing because you know you will be punished and you will go to hell maybe. But Punya is tempting you Please do more and more. So that definitely I am not going to suffer. And then what it ends into? A lot of enjoyment. And enjoyment makes you forget the Lord. One time Prabhupada was taking bath at Kishi Ghat. And then devotees heard that when you take bath in Jamuna, all papas are washed off. Then they were told that Papa and Punya both are washed off. Some devotees came out of Jamuna water. They said, no, 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 the Punya also is going. Why? I don't want to take bath in Punya. But we have to understand that Punya is bad, worse than Pap also. Because Punya makes you forget the Lord. So here we have to understand in this, in this earthly planet, when the pain comes, because of suffering, because of reaction of our activities, it keeps on reminding us of the Lord. And that fortune is not there with Indra. That is why, see the predicament. He has undergone a big crisis. Is it not true? His biggest power has failed. Miserably, he has come to his knees. He had to take shelter of a simple cow on earth. And then plead. See, he had to give up all the intoxication of his position. Helplessly he had to give up and come on the knees on the earth, offer prayers. But what happened, no? He didn't make his residence somewhere else. Again, he went back to the original residence in Swargaloka. And again, problem started. See, if you read the whole pastime, it is going on in the temple for so many months now actually. Isn't that true? At least three months now, we are reading this pastime. Now we are coming to the prayers of Indra. Definitely, in the um, essence of emotions, I am sure Indra must have gone intense emotional turbulence. This with the situation that he did. First of all, he was angry, intoxicated, and you know, very proud and throwing all the rain, in, telling them, throw them, water, destroy them. And then the opposite emotion came of repentance and sorry, Harry, how to re- reverse my activity now? I can't delete my activity. So he's in that mode. He's going up and down to Brahma Loka and Braspati and again coming down on earth and thinking what to do. You can imagine when he's coming around from Brahma Loka to earth, what must be his emotion? How he must be tensed till he reaches earth and meets Surubi and till Surubi accepts him and accepts the proposal and takes him. Till that time, imagine how he must be emotionally tensed. What, he, what must be happening to his mind, body, emotions. And then he goes through the whole prayers and there is no guarantee when in, even if I offer prayers, will Krishna listen? Will he decide to forgive me or not? That's all next afterwards. I'll do my job but I don't know what's going to happen with Krishna. And then finally offer so many prayers and cries through his eyes all over the body, cries and cries, sheds tears, repentance. Then Krishna forgives him. And then he does, okay, patch up, let's do Govardhan, uh, go, go in the Abhishek, and Govind Kund is formed. So many things have happened. It's not just like, say sorry and go back. So many detailed events have happened. And then to just cover up, he wants to glorify, then all the great ceremony took place, where everybody came from every place, with best of the things from their abode, they were told to bring. So Vayu came, Varuna came, everybody came with best of things, Varun came with Singhasan, Vayu came with Chamar and 
Indra came with so many things and such a grand ceremony as per the best of situations. Definitely, no, he, must, he would not spare anything because now he has done such a big blunder. He had to make up for that. He must have done the best of situations and organization. And then he has gone. So I'm, I expect that there must be a strong patch of a memory in his heart. What has just happened? And Indra's calculation is such that six months is on here is one day for Indra. And then it's just few days from Indra's point of view. It's not many, many years for him just to forget of engrossment. Just few days because here Krishna grew up and he went to Mathura and then he went to Dwarka, he married and but for Indra it is only few days. Maybe, I don't know, few days only. And then this Tarakasur has uh, stolen the kundalas of Shachi Devi. And Krishna doesn't spare anybody, even if he is his son, if he's on wrong side, he kills. So Krishna punished, killed Narakasur. And look at Krishna's love actually. Imagine. Krishna could have sent the kundalas with anybody, no? Anybody Dwarka could have come, hey, please go and distribute, deliver this kundalas back to Indra. But he decided to go himself, number one. So Krishna is not showing his pride that he is supreme personality of Godhead and Indra is a mere demigod appointed by him as Devendra. So why should I go? As a protocol goes, somebody else should go and deliver. But he himself goes, decides to go and tells his wife, Satya Mama, you also please come. Let's have a ride. Anyway, I am going. You also have a good outing. And you wanted to have a Parijata flower. So there is Nandan one filled with Parijata fragrance. So you can pick up on the way back. And see what happened. He went, he was received very well by Indra. Was worshipped by Indra. Was glorified by Indra. Was given gifts by Indra. So there was an event, even take, took place that time also. It's not that straight away it happened that he plucked the parijat flower. No, he went, he delivered his kundala. That means you have to be very grateful to him. Sir, you have come yourself. I am so grateful. You could have sent somebody else. Or I could have come down to pick up. But you have come all the way. Thank you so much. This also happened. Everything has happened. And then he just leaves. Indra Krishna leaves to come back. And on the way back he tells, My dear Satya Bhama, this is Nandan one. And there are so many Parijata flowers. You can pick up one. Some say tree, some say flower. Doesn't matter. But you know, she wanted to have a separate arrangement for herself. So she picked up. And the guards are guards. They, they may be foolish, but the guards attacked. And they told the boss, Indra, that... Krishna has plucked a flower or maybe plucked a tree. And look what Indra did. Indra came with army to fight with Krishna. So what would you call this? Is it foolishness? What is there? I don't understand actually. What, what it can be? Just he has come to your house. You received him as supreme personality of Godhead. But still the intoxication is so much that you forget immediately. You think that this is mine. But this Nandan one, which exists in Indra Loka, which exists in the 14th planetary system, everything belongs to him only. Everything is given by him. The position is given by him. The appointment letter has given by, is given by him. The authority, the power, the position, the enjoyment, the facilities, huh? everything is given by him only. And that person comes and still you attack him, challenge him. And then again Krishna defeats him. Again he comes to senses. So, getting immersed in intoxication is for long time. Some moments come in between which remind you. So, we should understand that we do not want this position. However attractive, lucrative and pleasurable it must be to our senses and mind, we should now pray to the Lord that we don't want to go to Swarga Loka. There should be conviction. What to speak of Indra Loka? Indra Loka is not the highest. There are lokas where people who are higher than Indra, they live. Where only, there is no sense gratification only. There is only subtle mental happiness. Intellectual happiness. In tapa loka, they only enjoy through tapasya. There are so many other lokas. There is no physical ladies and gents and foods and everything. Or beautiful flowers and everything. There is only tapasya. Which gives much, much, much higher and subtler enjoyments than what Indra is getting. 
And then there are higher planets and also there is Brahmaloka also. Brahmaloka, Brahmananda. The concept of Brahmananda is so superfluous that Indra Loka happiness is insignificant. Brahma Loka residents don't even want to look at what Indra is enjoying. It's like a pig enjoying with a sea pig. For them. They are so elevated. But still their happiness is material. It is not spiritual. It is still material pertaining to the body, mind, emotions and intellect and false ego. It is not spiritual. So you can imagine what kind of complications and lucrativeness, attractiveness is there in Swarga Lokas. So here, repeatedly, again and again, again and again, we should study the scriptures and understand what is going to happen there. Because if you go there to test, you will be lost. For, so for example, if you start sliding from the top of the mountain, then you are gone. You have to think before you start sliding. <laughs> before you put your foot first step on the slippery downhill road, that time, before that you have to think whether I should put a step or not. But once you put, even for trial sake, you are gone. There is no question of you saving yourself. Huh? Unless Krishna sends a tree branch in between and locks you in between. That is only mercy. Nothing you are doing. So that's why one should never, shouldn't even think of trying to see what is there in Brahma Loka and Swarga Loka and Indra Loka and Tapa Loka and Sur Loka. Here, now, by reading this transcendental scripture, Srimad Bhagavatam, and by associating with sincere devotees, we have to re- cultivate conviction. We do not want to go there ever. So what we should do? Never end up performing a Punya Karya. One danger is that whatever spiritual activity you are doing, you will render it to be a Punya Karya by your own mistakes and wrong consciousness. Right? Your chanting can become a mechanical. It can become a ritual. You will put it into category of a ritual by the choice that you have by making it into a ritual. So we have to avoid chanting to from becoming a ritual. Or anything that you do outside, for example, you are distributing food. There is Punya Karya. It will enroll you, enroll you uh, confirm your seat in Indra Loka. But that food for food distribution, you have to make it Krishna conscious by offering to Krishna and chanting Hare Krishna while distributing it. I am just giving some examples. You are giving some charity to a poor man who is begging from you. So you, when you give, you say, say Hare Krishna and then give. So make every good activity that you are doing into a spiritual activity. And do not make your spiritual activity into a material activity or a punya karya by the mistake of your consciousness. You have to be very careful. Because at the end of the story, when we come to the moment of death, there are four things which matter. One is unfulfilled desires. One is talk of pious activities. One is talk of impious activities. And last is spiritual stock, what you have gained. And what is our goal? That there should be no unfulfilled desires. There should be no list of pious activities. There should be no list of impious activities. That means no punya, no papa, and no unfulfilled desires. Only spiritual stock has to be there. And that has to be enough to take you back to Godhead, Sri Krishna. And it will not be nullified at the last moment. If you have some stock, you have to go through. It is said even if you have one pious activity at your, at your, what do you call, um, credit, you have to come back again to enjoy the fruits of that pious activity. And what does that mean? To enjoy a fruit of any pious or impious activity, you need to have a body, which means birth, old age, disease and death, which means adhyatmic, adhibhautik, adhidaivik miseries, which means so many other miseries which we are going to go through. For what? Because you had one pious activity to be enjoyed. With that activity, you can't go to spiritual world. It has to be finished here only. In this somewhere in 14 planetary systems. So it's quite a serious matter. To save ourselves from reaching heavenly planet, a lot of effortful activity has to be done here with full consciousness, awareness and knowledge. Otherwise, because of our ignorance of the situation, of the facts, we may just land up. We didn't expect, we are supposed, I, I took a flight to Goloka, but I just landed in the Loka in between. It may happen like that. And by the way, on the way also, when you are going, a lot of allurements are there. So don't even look at that side. 
while going. So what's going to happen to us after the moment of death has to be prepared before the death when we are here alive, alert, conscious in the company of devotees. That is our, that should be our goal. No time a devotee who is performing sadhana bhakti in pure devotional service, no time he should be defocused from his path. Because there are so many temptations to take right turn, right turn, left turn, right turn, left turn, in between. But you have to see that our focus remains constantly on Sri Krishna's lotus feet. And constant prayer has to be there. That I don't want to get diverted, deviated to any other path, any other laksha than your lotus feet. Then there are so many stations on the way to Golok Vrindavan. And I don't want to stop and look to any station. I want to just reach you to serve you. That should be our prayer. And unless there is desire, for, unless there is knowledge first, then there is desire, then there is intense prayer and actions according to your prayer, it's not going to happen. We have to seriously cultivate and understand that we don't want to get deviated. Even if I don't reach Golok Vrindavan, I don't want to land up into any other planetary system. What Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, okay, I'm not going to reach you, but let me take birth of a worm in the stool at Vaishnava's house or become a dog at the house of Vaishnava. That means I'm on the same path, at least halt and on the same path continuation. A different location and different body, but path is not changed. So whenever we read Indra, it is not that we condemn Indra. Absolutely not. We just learn lessons with due respect and uh, respect for him, of his position and his service, what he is doing. We don't want to make anything ill comments about Indra. We are just taking lessons from a situation. If this can happen to Indra, who am I? What is my position? So I have to protect myself, looking at the situation, learning. He is falling into the predicament again and again, repeatedly. Not there, there, are, there are two stories mentioned here, but there are so many stories in Puranas of this falling into predicament again and again. So we have to pray to the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. O oh Lord, please save us from getting entrapped into the activities of sense gratification. Please save us from getting attracted to opulent situations. Please save us from temptations of material activities. And please always keep us focused on very little at least pure devotional service at your feet. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes, Prabhuji. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji, for a wonderful class. Just the just, uh, last point you mentioned, Prabhuji, basically that we don't want pious even not even a pious activities. But many times we hear in Bhagavatam that many devotees, like you know, they describe the glories, that because of their piety, they came to devotional life. So how do we understand that? We don't want to accumulate pious activities for certain purpose. Pious activities are not bad. But they have a danger of giving you a fruit of the pious activity. If it, that fruit is Shuddha Bhakti, it is very good. But most of the times, what pious activities we perform, they yield a fruit. So, we are worried about only those activities, pious activities, which may yield us some material fruit. That we don't want. If if our pious activity, that means some 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 businessman is there, suppose he is always donating, donating to poor people and everybody, and he happens to also donate, donate to a pure devotee for a pure cause, that will lead him to bhakti and company of devotees. But all the other so-called charities that he has done may not lead him to bhakti. That may lead him to a position in Swargaloka. We are worried about that. Our charity can go in such a way that, but of course, are we in control of giving results to our own pious activities? Somebody else is giving the result. (laughs) So better we at least desire that, my Lord, I want to be at your feet. Pious, impious, please you protect us. From all these things. I don't understand, neither I'm in authority. Please help me that whatever I do comes in the account of my pure devotional service to you. I want to see that my everything goes in that account. I don't want to go into many accounts. That is my worry. <laughs> is that okay?
Any other question is there? So I think everything boils down to prayers. To save ourselves, we need to pray. That please save us. So that Lord will decide what to save us from. And there are so many things that we may not even know what we have been saved from. Like I always uh, think of example when a baby, small baby sleeping, three months old, a scorpion comes in a village, in a hut. And mother kills it or chases it away and protects the baby. But never wakes up the baby and tells, Baby, do you know at 3 a.m. in the morning, I saved you from a scorpion. You are sleeping, wake up, understand what I have done for you. <laughs> it is never done like that. Baby cockroaches may come, mosquitoes may come, snakes may come, scorpion may come. And the baby doesn't even know what it is from protected from by the kindness and love of the mother. Similarly, I don't know what are the dangers which will come on my path as per my past activities and what are the predicaments that I will have, what are the dangers I will go through. My Lord, I don't know anything. I am just at your feet. I am begging you, please protect me and keep me at your lotus feet. And the Lord will know if the devotee is sincere how to respond to him. Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki... गिरिराज गोवर्धन की श्री बिंदावन धाम की जय